All right, everyone, a couple days ago, Joe Biden called Trump the most racist president in history or the most openly racist in history. And uh, I thought about it for a moment, and then I could think of several dozen presidents that were easily more racist. Trump, I would put on the bottom most wrong. He's, he never says racist things. He's more like a Jimmy Carter, or arguably <laughs> the funniest part is George W. Bush would be among the group of least racist. I mean, you could just say non-racist, because if there's no evidence that a person is racist, calling them Hitler doesn't magically make them so. George W. was a huge advocate for, like, for like development in Africa, um, diplomacy towards Africa. He took a lot of visits there, actually. Towards the end of his second term, I think it was, he had that uh, one uh, dance group from Nigeria, if I remember correctly, and he, he had a great time. Laura Bush looked so uh, offended and upset at him getting up on stage and dancing with these uh, people in their tribal getup. And it was funny because Bush largely pretended to be like dumb and boy-like, but that was one of the instances in which if you looked at sort of his, his face and stuff, you could tell he actually enjoyed it. I think he was trolling his wife more than anything, but it was pretty funny. Obama wasn't racist. Now, hear, hear me out, because some people jumped down my throat. He was a race baiter. Trump arguably does this too, but it's just political strategy. It has nothing to do with it, some deep-seated racial animus. Like, Obama would drag race out for political reasons, but he never said, like, you know, oh, white people, this, that, and the other thing, some crazy shit like that. Neither does Trump, although he's certainly using it like the Democrats do as a wedge issue. Mainly, be, I mean, he's not even dog-whistling. He, he, all he has to do is exist for them to claim he's a racist. Reagan wasn't really racist, and Eisenhower didn't really give a fuck. He was, he was fighting against that, JFK, arguably, in some ways. For the most part, though, any president before the 50s and several of our presidents since then have been avowedly, openly, unabashedly, by modern standards, racist. That includes even such figures as Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was part of a group that was pioneered by people like Henry Clay that was literally dedicated to sending... Uh, former slaves back to Africa. In fact, if Lincoln hadn't been killed and replaced by people in the, the subsequent Republican-led post-Civil War era of Reconstruction, if Lincoln had not been shot, I have a feeling he would have made it mandatory and, and sent hundreds of thousands of people back to the African continent. The United States literally setting up, you know, sort of what's now Liberia as an enclave for former slaves. A lot of people don't know that about history. They see him as the great emancipator. Yeah, he emancipated the slaves. He also thought, from his biological standpoint, he thought that they shouldn't be in this continent because he's like, well, it breaches the natural God-given biblical order of where people were put in the world. They should go back and be among their people. That's what Lincoln thought. He was, a, by modern standards, he was a racialist. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson were slave owners. Thomas Jefferson also had sex with at least one of his slaves and fathered a huge number of children. Did you know? What was the proportion? Something like 20% of all people with black ancestry in this country are somehow related to Thomas Jefferson because he was so prolific in reproducing. Most of these people, I mean, there are some Whigs at the time, abolitionists, but even when we talk about abolitionism, you've got to understand that the vast majority of them were back to Africa, repatriate them to this other continent, Sponsors. They, they didn't believe in freeing the slaves and making them equal. They believed in freeing the slaves because they opposed slavery. And then, you know, sort of, they, they didn't envision the idea that, that former slaves would vote, for example. That was done by the Republicans, again, for political reasons. It's done for strictly political reasons. And a lot of people don't understand that side of history. There's a, there, there was a dark side to the Union and post, like, the Reconstruction era that a lot of people haven't read about. Let's just put it that way. Uh, LBJ, <laughs> oh, yeah, arguably one of the most racist. Uh, Woodrow Wilson, uh, didn't he resegregate, I think, federal buildings and stuff in blatant violation of the law? Wilson was extremely racist. Like, legit, like, there's no other term for it. Like, actually, totally racist. FDR was a racist. He threw a bunch of Italian and Japanese Americans, including full-on U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents, into, into his in, internment camps. Notice they don't use the term concentration camp, despite that's literally what they were. You know, m minus the crematories, uh, you know, what was the difference? But they use different terminology for them because they, they don't want it to be a blot on the most uh, so-called successful liberal administration in the nation's history. Oh, well, he beat Hitler, and he did these wonderful things and ended the Depression. No, FDR was a moron. 
He was a virulent, bitter, crippled racist uh, who, who, you know, screwed his secretary, among other people, had constant affairs. So, yes, he married Eleanor Roosevelt for her looks. A very lusty person. Very lusty. No, of course it is. A business marriage. Uh, a bitter man. Bitter racist. Prolonged the Great Depression. Totally bigoted in every possible sense of the term. Uh, Nixon. My goodness, Nixon was uh, extremely racist. JFK said some things, uh, you know, off the record, supposedly about Jewish individuals that have uh, ha had some rumors about them. I, I don't know whether that's 100% confirmed, but I can believe it. He's like from this, you know, sort of mafia family. Most of the presidents we've had have been completely racist. I think Coolidge is one of the one of the least. It's funny because the Vermont president, like. The rock rib, total laissez faire capitalist of the Roaring Twenties, like he didn't give a fuck. <laughs> he's, he's like he was reluctantly even the president. Like he didn't want to seek an extra term. His kid died, and he was all fucked up about it. And he's like, "Fuck it." Silent Cal, they used to call him. There was one tale I know my grandpa used to talk about this, where uh, I guess a reporter said, "I bet I can make you say t more than two words, Mr. President." And Coolidge looked at him and said, "You lose," or something to that effect. Uh, yeah, and then someone asked him how long his legs were, and he said long enough to reach the ground. Although that might be a confusion with, with I believe, Lincoln's reference prior, so that might, that might not actually be real. That might be not quite canonical Calvin Coolidge lore. Uh, but yeah, I mean, pretty much Coolidge and Eisenhower are the earlier presidents who were strictly racialist in nature. Not necessarily racist, like modern standards apply sort of social Marxism. I'm saying, like, insofar as, as disdain for, distrust of, hatred shown towards any non-white group, there weren't a lot of presidents until the modern era that fulfilled that. Not really. Like, some of them more than those, like, a lot of them, they probably didn't really think about it much. But for Joe Biden to say, well, Trump is this virulent racist, he doesn't even mention race. Nobody called him that back in the 90s when he was getting awards and smiling with a shit-faced, shit-eating grin next to fucking Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson when he was getting awards for, you know, not segregating housing and non-discrimination in his businesses. Nobody called him racist when the Mar-a-Lago, you know, desegregated itself and one of the few, what was one of the few private clubs that did at the time and let Jews in and black people, oh my goodness. Yeah, that was a big thing back then. I mean, the 90s were a period of a lot more racial animosity than you realize. If, you, if you've studied the satanic panic, mid-80s through the dawn of the 90s, a lot of that stuff really tied over with Nazi movements, like legit racialist movements, like the David Duke types, Tom Metzger and stuff. They, they were all part of that sort of same uh, overall moral panic. Because the thing is, a handful of people who were actually like bigoted were conflated as like some great satanic army of bigots that was rising up. It's remarkably similar to the tale told today. And it's the same bullshit. And independent content creation, I guess, is the new public access slash, you know, shock jock radio that also got implicated at the time. Unbelievable. The funny part is that Joe Biden would use the term racist to describe other people because a lot of the far left within the party is calling him the same thing. So he should know better. He should know that just because it's claimed that you're a racist or you're a bigot or you're hateful or extreme or a radical or doesn't mean that's the case. Biden should know this better than any other living Democrat. He's the front runner, so people sling slime at him all day. I don't think that Biden is racist. I also don't think that he's like a molester or something like that. He's a creepy. He's a kind of a weird dude. I think he's slightly demented. I think he'd make a terrible president. But I mean, people are being hyperbolic. But for all that, then he tries to project off on Trump and be hyperbolic himself. It's really funny to watch him be like angry old man mode and try to be like, oh, I'm going to show these far left young whippersnappers what real anger is like. Trump is the most racist president. It's like, no, uh, you failed civics, I guess. Like, did you even study U.S. history? Like, you get all the you know, fucking high-level degrees, been in politics for fucking 50 years. You don't even understand, like, there aren't that many presidents to remember. There aren't that many people that have been in that office. Yeah, so, you know, you'd think that you could crack open a history book and look at what Nixon and LBJ at least were saying, Woodrow Wilson and some of these others. Yeah, the three-fifths compromise was engineered by people less racist than Donald Trump. Yeah, fucking get real. That's about all. Peace out.